Hey, my friends, this is The Art of Prepping. Hope you guys are doing good today. So I got thinking about all the, the new people out there. People who are just realizing that they're not prepared. And they look at the genre of preparedness and they're just freaking out. Um, I still get an email at least once a week of someone who's very stressed out because they don't really know where to start. They're completely overwhelmed with just the whole concept of preparedness. Uh, they have started to realize that they are not prepared for pretty much anything. And, um, you know, what I say to that is that just use it as a wake-up call. You know, don't get caught up in it. Just acknowledge that you're not prepared and do something about it. Start today, right? Just do something today, even if it's a small thing. Do something right now. And you know what happens, though? You'll start to feel a little bit better the more you do things. So in this video, I just want to give you two examples of the hundreds and hundreds of examples I could give. I'm just going to pull two of them out of the air. And now it just happens that these two things are pretty good. So if you're new to preparedness, you might want to listen up and give it a try. Now, I'm not going to use a bunch of fancy words and uh, acronyms like sometimes we do on the channel or you might find on other channels uh, for this video. I'm just going to keep it really plain and simple. So this is plain English. And the first thing that you can do right now to better your situation going forward is to, to find a bag, an unused bag at, at your house. Now, any bag can work, but let's just go ahead and say if you have a backpack, it's a lot better, right? Because you can carry it on your person a lot easier than if you just have some strap that you have to throw over your shoulder or something. That might work. It's better than nothing. But if you have an unused backpack that's in good working condition, that's great. Grab that up and, and put that to the side. Next... You want to start to gather essentials that you would, you know, want and need if you had to ever leave the house for, for whatever reason. You know, I mean, you would know better than I what the threats are in your area. I mean, it could be a wildfire, you know, from it could be anything from storm systems, maybe like a hurricane or tornado it could be earthquakes. I mean, well, it could be civil unrest. But if you have to just leave your home in a hurry, like you might only have 20 minutes to grab things and go, having a kit that's already put together with some essentials, or if not the bulk of your essentials to help you get through the next 24, 48, 72 hours, or maybe even longer, is going to be very desirable. Very desirable. And you will never regret putting this kit together if you ever have to use it. So I'm going to kind of leave it mostly up to you to kind of figure out what is essential. I mean, you know what you need throughout your day. But I'm just going to throw in a few ideas just to kind of get the wheel spinning, right? So if you have some extra cash on your person, uh, maybe you just carry a lot of extra cash in your wallet. You might want to tuck a few bills in your bag. If you don't carry cash on your person, maybe the next time you go out today, uh, hit an ATM machine and pull out a little bit of money so you can have it for your bag. So have some emergency cash. Another thing that's really handy to have, of course, once again, this is not a comprehensive list. It's just a few ideas, just a few examples to get you started. Is a good light. And a hands-free option is really the optimum. If you're just going to have one light, you know, a headlamp is, is the best. Uh, but for a lot of people, they want redundancy. And the more that you work on your kit here, um, the more that you'll find that, okay, it might be nice to have a headlamp and a handheld light, you know. And, of course, you just buy the best that you can afford, you know, at the time of, uh, of doing all this. And do some research, too. Don't be afraid to look things up and do comparisons and ask around, ask friends. Do research online to see, like, what is a good light, you know? Because there is a such thing as a good light and a bad light. That, that's a real thing, you know? And there's a reason why some things cost more than others. 
So take a look and see what you're really buying. You know, read the reviews. Another thing that you might want to consider for your bag is a multi-tool. And, you know, I would kind of steer away, obviously, from the big box store and the flea market $5 multi-tools. You definitely, once again, get what you pay for. And in that situation, you don't get very much. Those multi-tools might get you through a pinch. Sometimes it's just better than nothing, of course. But if you have a little more money, get something that's going to like last and you'll be proud of and that'll have real features that are usable. So a multi-tool or maybe a small repair kit might be a good option for your bag. Uh, food. It goes without saying, though, if you're going to be out for a few days trying to live out of a bag, you probably want to have something to eat. And food bars is like one of the more simple things. Some food bars have longer shelf life than others. You just have to look at what it is that you're looking at getting. But energy bars, nutrient-dense bars, uh, all kinds of food bars out there. There's uh, trail mixes that aren't too bad. So, you know, definitely have some food, you know. And next is at least a few containers of water. And it would be really smart to have at least something to help you filter the water so that you have some type of filtration system. Um, And just a few more ideas here would include like a change of clothes, some type of uh, maybe a poncho or a a tarp, something that can help protect you from the elements. Uh, Tape. It doesn't have to be a full roll of tape. Maybe all you have at home is just like, you know, the end of a roll. Maybe there's only like 10 feet left. Well, just go ahead and put that roll in your bag. And then the next time you're out, get yourself a fresh roll for the house. But just have at least some tape. Um, It's also kind of nice to have a radio, like a, an emergency weather radio. If you don't have one of those, but you have maybe a small AM, FM radio, put that in there. Just make sure you have some extra batteries for your electronics uh, or a power supply that you can recharge. Like, for example, your phone or any other device uh, that you may need. So I just wanted to use all that as an example of some things to put into a bag. Okay. That you may need for egress purposes during an emergency. And once again, I'm not going to get into all the the acronyms and and all the the terminology that all this really is called. But just know, though, that having stuff, essentials, having essentials put back is smart because sometimes you just don't have enough time to go around the house and collect all this stuff when you really need it. And to have it all in one bag that you can just throw on your back and go, it could be something that could save your life. Now, I have one more thing that you can do here today that's very, very practical. A lot of people don't ever do this. I'm not even really sure why they don't, but I think it's just one of those things that, you know, it's more comfortable not to do this, so people just don't do this. But that is to skip a couple of meals, and you can do this today. Uh, But definitely, you know, there's nothing that's going to really hurt you when it comes to skipping a couple meals. A lot of people I know on a regular basis, they'll skip one meal and it's not that big of a deal. But I'm talking about at least two meals. I mean, you can push this further and and skip three meals, but I think that at least two meals to skip is going to really give you at least a, a beginning taste of what it's like to start to be really hungry Uh, to have lower energy, to have some concentration problems. Some people have like different types of fatigue. Some people get like stomach cramps, um, digestive issues. Um, Obviously, we're not trying to do this to make you sick. And if you are starting to get really sick, then you want to stop doing this and eat something. But most people can skip two meals and be just fine. It's completely reversible for most people. So, I mean, all you got to do is eat something, right? And within like 20 minutes, you'll probably feel back to normal. But this is something that you can learn from because to some degree, this is a physiological issue. And then to another level of this, is it's a psychological thing. It's a mental 
process to work through. And so learning about how you react to, to not having food and how you react to stress can go a long way in making you more prepared because you're not going to be shocked when you have these symptoms because you haven't eaten all day. You'll be like, oh, I know what that's about because I haven't eaten and that's why I'm tired. Or that's why I can't think very clearly because I haven't eaten anything for 24 hours or whatever. So it's good to put things into perspective and it'll keep you a lot more calm and reduce panic um, compared to those people who have never really experienced basic types of hunger and fatigue, you know, related to hunger and so forth. So I think it's good to condition ourselves. And plus, really, when you look at the literature, fasting a few times a month is really good for you. You know, I try to do it at least once a week. I do 16 to 24 hour fast at least once a week. Sometimes I do it twice. And I would encourage everyone to at least fast a few times, you know, a couple times a month. At least try to make that as a goal. And uh, I think that it's good to build up, uh, you know, just the ability to handle situations. Once again, that may be uh, limited in food. You may have like, you know, rations and uh, you may be rationed to the point that you can't have three meals a day. You may only be able to eat once a day because there's not enough food in whatever that situation is. And once again, also, if you're used to uh, the stress or at least you're, you're aware and you have some experience of dealing with stress related to fatigue and hunger and all that, um, you're not going to feel like, you know, your the world is ending or something. So putting things into perspective and getting some experience that's outside of your comfort zone can be very, very helpful. So, hey, I hope this helps. You guys take care. Catch you later.